the great things about the Art Foamies foam stamps is that they're so big. I mean, if you look at this, this is, this, this is a big stamp, right? It's huge. But that also can lead to some questions about how do you print them. So I, I thought I would show you two different ways that I like to print these big stamps so that you can sort of get a sense of it. So I'm gonna be using a brayer and an inking palette, which you can see right here. It could be a palette paper, it could be whatever. And then I'm just gonna use regular acrylic paint. So I'm just taking some acrylic paint and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it out onto my inking palette. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and roll my brayer and then apply the paint to the foam stamp simply by brayering it on just like so. And then I tend to like to go in more than one direction when I'm applying the paint to the stamp. So I'm going up and down and all around. And the good news is if you're using a color that's different from the previous paint that you used, then you can simply go ahead and see exactly where your paint is. So I think it's always a little bit better to be slightly more generous with the paint rather than less. So I may not have put out enough paint onto my palette, rookie mistake, because um, I'm running pretty low on it. But we'll see if I'm gonna get an impression. So I've inked up my whole thing, as you can see right there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. This is just some painted paper that I have right here. I'm gonna move these out of the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and all I do is simply press it down, okay? And you wanna move your hand along here. I'm using this hand as an anchor to keep the large stamp in place as I simply move around. But the good news is these are super thick, so you tend to not have a lot of problems with them moving too much and sliding. And then you can see, I didn't put enough paint on my stamp, but you can see you get the impression right there. So let's try it again with a little more paint this time. Ah, and voila. And if you put enough paint, you should be able to get a ghost print or a second print as well without even needing to re-ink or re-paint that stamp up and yes i was able to gorgeous okay super cool so now what if i want to print on something that's much smaller than this stamp because just because the stamp is big doesn't mean that you can't print on something like let's say a tag which is obviously considerably smaller no worries so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ink this up again but this time i'm only going to ink up or paint up part of it and the reason for that is why waste paint i know that this the um tag is smaller than this area. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tag and instead of picking up the stamp and putting it on the tag, I'm actually gonna put the tag onto the stamp. Then I'm simply gonna take a spare piece of paper that I have, okay, and I'm gonna place it over and use it just to protect my hands. And then again, I have an anchoring hand that's holding the tag under here to the stamp it's with downward pressure so that while I'm doing this rubbing or smoothing uh, motion, nothing's moving. And now this hang is moved, but it's still the anchor hand. So I'm always anchoring it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and peel this paper off. And let's see how our tag turned out. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, it turned out super duper awesome. You can see how good that white paint looks on the black tag. Now you can do tags that are even tinier. So for instance, this stamp has a lot of great little circles and you might want to use them with, let's say a tag this big. Okay. Cause the little circles, or you might want to use some of the big ones or whatever, no worries. So what I'm going to do is the white paint isn't gonna show up very well, so I'm just adding into my paint a little bit of some uh, blue or turquoise, turquoise. And then again, I'm just rolling that out, mixing those colors together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. I obviously don't need to apply it all over the whole stamp because that tag is so teeny weeny. It's not gonna hit the whole thing. And then maybe, I, do I have a second mini tag somewhere? I do, because then what I can do is, let's have one, let's extend this paint out a tiny bit. There we go. So that we can have one tag going this way, one tag going this way. And then let's take a, let's use this as our scrap piece of paper. 
go ahead and put that down over it and then again rub 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 now i'm not necessarily anchoring those little tags but i am anchoring the whole stamp overall and then i'm not rubbing till i get in i'm just rubbing in a downward motion so i'm having downward pressure while i'm doing this and i'm gonna go ahead pull that off i'm getting some nice little marks onto this deli paper and now let us see what we got onto our little tags. There's one. It's very light blue. And now here is the other one. Okay, you can see it right there. So for some reason, I have to tell you, and I'm gonna do a close up here, something unexpected happened. I wonder if you can see that detail. For some reason, oops, this doesn't want to focus. Oh, it's such a hard life. Okay, so anyway, as you can see now, so for some reason the tag is kind of pulled up a little. So we're gonna do that again, just so we have a nice, clean, unpulled surface. So one more time, here we go. Ah, much better, much better, much better. Well, there you go. Now you can see I have all my dots on my little tags and they look much, much better. That makes me happier. Okay, so um, I don't clean these stamps as you might be able to tell, but what I do is I kind of stamp them off just onto anything that's underneath um, so that I don't have to think about it. And then I just put them in a big bucket to dry. The other thing that I wanted to say about printing your stamps this way is see how this stamp is bendable? That's both super cool and super not cool. So let me put some paint on it and I'll show you why it's super cool and super not cool at the same time. So it's super cool because I can determine how I want this to print. If I want it to print more sort of a bend like this, if I want it to print kind of in a zigzag and I can kind of drag it exactly if I want it to be totally straight. I kind of like it curved. So I'm gonna squish those pieces together and then I'm gonna go ahead and press down. And again, I'm using that whole anchor hand theory and I'm pushing with the flat palm of my hand down to make sure that I'm getting everything on there. And I'm gonna peel the stamp off and what a lovely print, okay? And you can see that curve. But sometimes if you're printing more than one, um, it can be a pain to have to like think about what you're doing so much. So the other option when you have these stamps that curve like that, that are kind of loose and jiggly, just like me, I'm kind of loose and jiggly too. Um, what you can do is you can just go ahead and print it the same way we did before where you leave the stamp facing up, you sort of pose it in the position that you want, you take what you're printing on, you place it face down onto your surface, you rub with your hand like so making sure you can sort of feel your way to all those little bits. Even if you had a thicker piece of paper, you'd be able to feel some of it. And dun da 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 Okay, there is your print, super cool. And there's plenty left. There should be plenty left for another print. Okay, so um, I hope this gave you some ideas for working with some of these larger art foamies. I was thinking actually that even this like huge circle one could be really cool with some of the little tags because you can't, let's see how slowly I can talk Well, I do this. Because it would just sort of look like curved lines. I hope I got some color on there. Otherwise, I don't think it's gonna show up on this white tag. So, but you could do some cool stuff and you can also do something where you only like do part of it like let's say I only want part of the tag to be stamped. So you can see how it's hanging off the edge because I only want part of it to be stamped. And then you just go ahead and protect your hand and go for it and boom. It's kind of cool. Now I just have stripes on part of my tag. And actually it occurs to me I could go in now with a darker color. Let's see how good I am at this. I go in with a slightly darker Play the darker color. She says that she puts black paint onto her palette. But anyway, slightly dark. It's gonna mix in. It's only me slightly lighter. Um, I could go in now with this and add it to the stamp. 
And then if I'm a very clever printer, how clever a printer am I? I think I might be able to do a little bit of alternating, although it probably won't work out exactly the way I'd like it to. But that's the nature of art and experimentation is that you try things and sometimes it doesn't work. But sometimes it does. And those times are the magical times. Oh, it worked kind of. That's really, really cool. So that's a super fun kind of idea. You can see if I put the close up on, let's say, um, if it'll do a close up. Yeah, now you can see I have my blue stripe and my sort of black blue stripe, which is kind of neat. And here are some of the other prints that we did that look pretty cool. And then white paint on a black tag. And then I think this leaf stamp is one of my all time favorite stamps in the whole world. I love it. So super cool, fun ideas. This stamp, by the way, says make, uh, what does it say? Oh yeah, it says make art every chance that you get, baby. So pretty cool. It's like an eye chart, but uh, it has a phrase. Anyway, okay, so I hope that you will give some of these techniques a try with your art foamies. Remember, you don't need to clean them. You do need to make sure that they're not drenched in paint, but you don't actually need to like clean, clean them. Okay, thanks so much and see you around.